whose who brings about like the cycles again like you see in some of these other ones known as gods of fertility he brings about the cycles of nature the cyclical aspect of existence because he's a god who dies and has the ability to die and reincarnate through his descendants <clears throat> he's um so he has the ability to die that's normally not something you attribute with the god but he's immortal but he has this characteristic of death and rebirth okay uh set is has the characteristic of being always like the same he is always who he is like you know immortal unchanging so seth is someone who through his nature became antagonistic to his brother because all four of these divine beings having equal rights to the existence being created to having been created together uh set decides he can take out Whistler and then he can have everything to himself try to you know dominate the two women and then have everything to himself now he kills wizard. I shot manages to bring him back so that they can have a child known as him. Heru also Horace. Whisser is a god who dies and reincarnates. He's a god of fertility. And when he dies, he also goes and, and um, creates the world of the dead, also known as the human tech. And by creating the world of the dead, he gives human beings a chance to go when we die because we see ourselves as being his descendants and also in the image of his son, Heru. Heru has the personality of someone who's been born into the world and has the responsibility without his choosing of having to fight to reconquer what belonged to his father. He has that obligation and at the same time, Remember, Set was trying to kill Whistler before Whistler can have Heru. And because Aisha was able to go through all of her trials in order to conceive Heru from Whistler, then Heru was born anyway, despite Set's efforts, but Set is going to keep coming after him. That's the same way we see in humanity that evil never stops coming for us. The destructive the destruction never stops coming from us. For us, Set has a big example, a, a big advantage over Heru in the fact that he was born. I mean, he was in existence already when Heru was born. He was able to plan for the fact that Heru was coming and set traps for him to mislead him into fighting against his own interests. So we can see now what humanity is dealing with now. All the traps for humanity have been set for us. By the forces who want to mislead us into following their own interests. This story is a very, very deep story because literally you can see all humanity in it. 
It gives humanity, it gives us humans as a, an opportunity to understand where we fit in in time and space. Because long, long, long time before modern religions and politicians had the, you know, the idea to start misguiding humanity with these stories of made up gods. Humanity had an interest in really understanding the true face of existence. And we really, really gave our best to understand it. We worked for thousands, tens of thousands of years to understand it and to follow the principles of those teachings, which is why those very important cultural symbols that we talked about, Kemet has them too. And this story really symbolizes the culture in a way that is inspiring to a human being. Because understanding the nature of Heru will lead us to always be looking for the threat that evil poses. The destruction aspect. Because this story also tells humanity our goal. Because Whistler comes back to teach humanity and teach us right from wrong, to teach us values and principles, civilization, culture, so that we can have the opportunity to come closer to the gods. And hopefully achieve divinity ourselves. It gives us the roadmap for all that and how to protect ourselves from the evil, from the corruption. And first and foremost, all the corruption that we can see arising within our own self, each one of us. I